Making it Monday. Pretty much in the last two months we've had a Making It Monday session every Monday night at seven o'clock. We're a little bit early this evening and we're going to make a really nice, easy, simple make because sometimes that's all we need to do. And so the patterns are free. They, they come up as 50 pence because it's a shop and I have to charge you something. There is an anomaly with the glasses case. I don't know quite how that happened, but the rest are all 50 pence. So if you, when you get to checkout, if you put free in the coupon code, which is the bottom left-hand corner of the, the form that you see, you get it for nothing. And I'm really, really happy that you get it for nothing. And if you want to pay me, don't, don't worry about it because it really pretty much all goes to PayPal. So don't, don't do that. You get it for free and then I'll be happy, you'll be happy, and we'll be able to make the, all these lovely things together. Now, doing a quick bit of mathematics, which as you know, is not my strong point. Um, there have been well over 2,000 downloads over the last two and a half months of those patterns, which is phenomenal. I have to say John's not terribly happy about it because he has to do all the admin, but it's been phenomenal for you guys because you've been getting the patterns. And, and you don't have to do one at a time. You can put all of them into your basket. Just put free and then they're all free, okay? There's nothing to pay at all and it's been my absolute pleasure to bring them to you, okay? So um, in the future, they'll be probably once a fortnight, well, they will be once a fortnight at seven o'clock on Facebook. And of course we can record this event for YouTube as well. And tomorrow this will go on to YouTube for all my lovely subscribers, which is close to 27,000 now on YouTube for them to watch and enjoy. And they download the patterns as well all over the world, which is just phenomenal. Makes me a very proud person indeed. So tonight we're going to do the trolley cover. Now, look. There's no way I could get a shopping trolley in the workroom, okay? I don't think I even, could even get it up the stairs and through, through the hallway to, to get to me, right? So I've had to improvise. My John, you can see, I'll do a close up in a minute. My John has cut me a tube, <laughs> which is the same size as our local store that has, a, um, that has shopping trolleys outside. And you'll see the photograph on the pattern of this on a trolley so you know it's going to fit and um, we're going to make the one tonight we're going to make just slightly bigger just to allow for trolleys that might be a little bit of a wider handle I don't know if trolleys are generic um, <laughs> but the trolley I had the photograph taken with it had a coin thingy mechanism here I know you can get them to go in the middle might cause you an issue <laughs> but generally speaking this should fit most trolleys or carts wherever you are in the world um so yeah so we took this to my local shop to take the photo <laughs> and if you notice in the photo they're all chained up they're all chained up i needed to put i actually i don't even know what i had to put in it to get loosen a trolley off because i don't use one then when i go there but um i wasn't going to put a penny in or pounding or whatever to loosen it so I could take the trolley around the shop just to take a photograph because that's what I really wanted to do. So we had to do it outside with them all locked together. You have a look at the picture you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now the great thing about this one is that it has, in fact let me change cameras and if I bring this down you can actually see whoop, that this is what it looks like and it's got velcro so you can see it's got velcro on the end there about an inch in there's a reason for that. Um, and it has a little tab here that I've got a D-ring on. Okay, there's the D-ring. If I cover the rest of it up, that's what we're going to make, okay? And um, the D-ring will allow you to hang something else from it. And it, in this case, I've got a lovely little sanitizer case. Now, this is going to be the next pattern, okay? Um, a lot of people have asked about it, and I have done a Facebook Live about making this on this page, but I'll do a proper pattern for you, and then you'll have it for, for forever. And this is a, a just a little hand sanitizer case um, bottle inside. This is I think this was from Marks and Spencers, but I think as far as I'm aware, your local little shops can sell this size as well. And I'll, on the evening, I will tell you what the sizes are. OK, nothing will be left to chance. Um, so this has been made deliberately to hang that from there. But of course, 
and it's really stable okay it's really strong and because of all the velcro we're using it really is super strong so it wouldn't matter what you hung from there it's going to take the weight really well okay so um, you can see straight away how strong it's going to be and how useful it's going to be um, the other thing is if you've got a little one in the in the cart in the uh, sitting in the 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 bit behind you know the little seat they've got something nice and soft to put their hands on if they reach out that far and also you have as well and um, but don't forget to keep yourself safe you know for goodness sake wash this very regularly in fact I would actually wash it every time I used it um, just to make sure you're safe and I'm sure you you know that you don't need me to tell you but it's um it's a good idea for me to just uh, advise you of that so this is what we're going to make so let me just take it off you can see how strong it is I'll take it off my improvised um trolley handle thank you very much John for doing that super and it's a very easy, simple make. And from the pictures on, in the pattern, you'll be able to see exactly where to put your, your Velcro to make sure that you get it in the right place um, for it to, to turn and um, you know, turn around the handle and then grip the other side. So we put our um, loops on, uh, sorry, our, yes, our loops on this side. I'm pretty sure I said that in the pattern. I hope I haven't got the wrong way around. I don't think it will matter much, but your loops will go here and your hooks go um, on the back. But we, we can do that as we go along and then you'll see. And we're making that little tiny tab with a D-ring on the end. So hopefully you've got a D-ring. And it's going to be really useful. Um, so yes, a lovely, simple, easy make. You can see how it is. But here we go. So we've got all the pieces cut, hopefully. We've got our, our D-ring. We've got our four inch square to make our tab with. We've got our piece of Velcro, which or hook and loop, whatever manufacturer you decide to use. Um, and I think that was 14, 14 and a half inches or 14 inches is fine. You've then got your lining fabric, whatever that is. I'm just using calico tonight. Um, your pretty fabric. Now this is lovely. This is Liberty and it's got rocket, space rockets on and, and um, yeah, in fact, it's all space rockets. I, was just, I thought it had little boats on, but it doesn't. It's all space rockets. It's quite sweet, actually. And then a piece of wadding, which is a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. We've got that. Oh, just remembered, have I got my spray? Yes. Um, and then obviously you've got your, your pattern. And, and, and now I'm actually putting what it is at the top. So you can, if you file these away, you'll know, because obviously all the fronts are the same, you'll now know from now on that that pattern is project number nine. So you can get them, put them in order, but then you could write on the other ones, so you'll be fine, won't you? But like I said, this front cover is quite print heavy, quite ink, ink heavy. So I would just print off from pages two to, I think it's four, isn't it? I think it's four pages altogether. Yeah, two to four, okay? So you'll know, um, and I'm just looking at the photograph, and yes, you can see they're all chained together. <laughs> Right, so that's the pattern. So I'll have that to one side so I can sort of refer to that um, to make sure I'm following the pictures um, along with you when you come to make it. You don't have to make it now. You can make it, let's see if I can move around Millie the dog. You can make it anytime you like because this Facebook Live will always be on my page under video. So you'll be always be able to find it or I'm going to put it on YouTube tomorrow anyway so you can find it there. Right, so let me just reach across and get my spray. So we might as well um, put our wadding onto our fabric first of all to get that prepared. And you're always going to spray your wadding, guys, okay? You don't need a lot. And don't worry that we're not actually going to um, put the to take the wadding any further than the seams. Because it's such a small project, this wadding won't shift. Um, and we're going to stitch most of it down with the Velcro, so it, it's all fine. So it's like I said, it's about a half an inch smaller all the way round. And if once you've laid it, laid it down on your piece, which is what's happened here, if it's stretched, because wadding will stretch, and it's a little bit too big, do cut it back. Because it does make a difference to your project, okay? So, there we go. So if I hold that up, you'll be able to see what that looks like. Okay, you can just about see around the edges that I've left a quarter inch all the way around. Okay, so that's that first bit done. So let's just get that out of the way. 
The next thing is to actually make your little tab. So here is my little four inch square and I've got my iron on. And this is the same procedure for making straps and, and I always do this. So if you've worked with me before, if you look worked with my patterns before, whatever, you'll know that this is what I always do to make a one inch strap tab Call it, call it what you like, depending on your project. So um, give the whole piece a nice iron so it's really nice and flat. If you've got a wool mat, please use a wool mat. It makes a huge difference to your work. And then all you're going to do is fold the whole thing in half and give it a press. And really all you're doing with that is, is getting yourself a guide. Look, there's a lovely crease now. And we're just going to fold that edge up into the middle and press that down and if you when you press it if you lose that center crease which of course you will don't worry because you've already got that raw edge there and you're just bringing that edge up to that edge to create your um, well half of your strap so you've got the two long sides now coming together in the middle and then all we're going to do is fold that over again now you don't need any stabilizer with this guys you don't need this to be super, super sturdy. You just need it to be um, a lovely, neat job. So that's given us our one inch piece. And you can see how that looks. If I open that up again, you can see how that looks. OK, so that's a four by four piece with um, the two edges brought into the middle. And then we're just going to top stitch that to really neaten it. So if I bring in the machine, so if you just stay where you are, bring in the machine, let's get it fairly central to you that's a bit better and I'm just going to run along both sides now you because this is a top stitch you could lengthen the stitch if you wanted to but I'm just going to go down the edges as it is I think it's 2.75 on my machine and just to save a bit of time all I'm going to do is needle up swivel my piece around and just come along that short edge and then just come back up the other side again. And it really does make a neat job. There we go. And then cut your threads. So then all we need to do is to secure our D-ring onto that. So get your D-ring and just thread it through. Okay. And then just bring your two short ends together like that. And we're going to stitch these two edges together. It's a stay stitch or a basting stitch just to, to just bring those together just to make it much easier than using pins. So just stitch the raw edges together and cut the threads. And this time um, in the one that I made I stitched right up here as close as I could so I'll do that again so just be aware that you're putting a piece of metal very very near the foot of your machine and your needle if you can hear my dog apologies um, but it, as long as you're careful it'll be absolutely fine so we're just taking it as close as we can to that piece of hardware and what that does, it keeps everything safe and it keeps everything super, super neat. So we'll just trim that away. And just got a bit of a tangled thread there. So we'll just keep that nice and neat. There we go. And what, so what you've done is you've secured your D-ring in place and you've made a right lovely super job. Can you see that fabric? It's got a, that's like a rocket ship there. And there's a bit of a rocket ship there. And that's Liberty. It's very unusual, isn't it, for Liberty? OK, so now what we need to do is to actually position this on our um, fabric. So I'll just move my machine out of the way and bring it in. Now, on the pattern, it says two and a quarter inches from the outside edge that you're going to... Oh, sorry, you can't see it. That you're going to measure. Let's get it in so you can see. It's always helpful. And sorry, I've got to do it so you can see. And it's it's a new because I've got my camera set up in a certain way. It's not easy. <laughs> so it's just realizing where I've got to put things. So the, obviously you can't see the whole thing, but this is my bottom right hand corner here. Okay, I think you can make that out. And so two and a half inches. I'm going to mark it with a pen. 
two and a half inches, uh, sorry, two and a quarter inches from this um, edge here. So let's just mark that so you can see. So let's just mark it like that. Okay, so that's two and a quarter inches in, and then I'm going to put my tab right next to it. Okay, so right next to my mark, that's where my tab goes. And what you can do is you can put a little clip there and then you can top stitch the, all of those together or pin it, so it's up to you, whatever is you find most convenient. So we'll just put a little clip there just to hold it. And now what we'll do is we'll run that under the machine, again, just to secure the whole thing. And it just makes it um, a lot, lot easier to deal with all the rest of the project if all of these pieces are stitched down in place. So about an eighth of an inch. Okay, so there is our tab and D-ring installed. Dead easy, wasn't it? Okay, so if you were to look at your pattern, which I will, <laughs> it says now that we need to put our pieces together. So let's just do that so you can see. And it doesn't matter now where you put your, you know, I might zoom that out a little bit so you can see better. Um, they might wriggle the camera a little bit guys so bear with while I just try and bring this out oh that's the wrong way just bring that back in oh actually that's good so you can see the project in, in total now which is much much better so what we're going to do is going to put right sides together of our lining fabric and our out of fabric okay now I do suggest you pin this because when you're dealing with a precise bit of cutting like this a square a rectangle something like that you can bet anything you like that these layers will move if you haven't pinned it so it is worth spending a little bit of time now in the picture I've used clips but there's absolutely no reason why you can't use pins so if I look at the picture, I know that the um, little tab is actually here. So if I, if I sort of turn that so it matches the picture, that'll be a good idea. So I know my tab is, is under there, look. There it is. So I'll tuck that back in and I'll just pop a pin there. Now actually, when you're stitching, it's better to have your pin heads going um, out of the fabric because as you're stitching round, you can, with your right hand, pull your pins out much more easily if the pin head is sticking out. Okay, little tip for you there. Now the turning gap is going to be on the opposite side of this. It's going to be here. And on the pattern, it shows you two yellow dots and that's where your gap is going to be for turning through. So let's just um, quickly do this so you can see it brought together. Oh gosh, that's very very uh, blunt. <laughs> Crikey, that one's going to go in the bin. <laughs> so again, as we're working around, now you don't have to be absolutely precise with your gaps. Don't look at mine and try to measure it. You just need a fairly decent gap. So that's the where I'm going to stop stitching just there. And this is where I'll start stitching just here. So we have a decent gap, so there's no need to struggle. And just make sure all those lovely pins or clips are in the right place. So look, you can see now. So my turning gap is going to be between here and here. And my little tab is here. And the only reason why I don't put it on the same side as my turning gap is because if it was anywhere near, if the gap was anywhere near my tab, it just makes it more difficult to turn through and get a nice, neat job. OK, so the next thing is that we're going to um, stitch all of this together. So let's bring the machine in. Now I know I'm a little bit further away now so hopefully you'll still be able to see okay. So I haven't measured it. If you want me to measure it I will but it's probably a good four and a half inches. So now it's just a case of travelling around the whole thing. Quarter of an inch seam allowance. Take your pins out as you go. And when you get to the corner, you know by now that you're just going to put needle down, foot up, pivot, and just come down. And like I say, you mustn't worry about the fact that your um, wadding, your batting, is actually only glued down. 
and that you're not stitching it into the seams because when we put the hook and loop on the velcro that will hold it all down and in place and it's such a small project it absolutely won't, won't make a jot of difference if you're at all worried about it then by all means quilt it that'd be absolutely gorgeous <laughs> do some cross hatch quilting so we're just coming to our tab just underneath there now so you'll hear the needle going through especially if it needs changing and you'll see again we can just put our needle down press the foot up pivot and around the corner we go and it makes such a lovely little project and I think you know what if you are brave enough to go shopping over the next um, few months then it, this is going to be an absolute asset to you and of course you can pop it if you've made yourself um, uh, a case for your mask and all your other bits and bobs that you might need then this can go in there as well and then you can decide whether you use it or not. So there is our project all stitched around. So all we're going to do now is actually just cut off our corners, take away some of the bulk. Be careful not to cut through your stitching. I know this is uh, common sense, but just keep at least two millimeters away from those stitched uh, corners there because they are a weak point. So again, we'll just cut through, cut through. There we go. And all we're going to do now is turn that through. Now what you could do is this turning gap, um, if I turn it this way you'll be able to see, this turning gap is just here and what you could do before you turn it through is that you will actually, um, sorry let me just alter something, um, let's have a look, let's just say yes, oh, my TV was just about to switch off. <laughs> So what you could do before you actually turn that through is to fold these over and press them and you might find that when you come to top stitch this it's going to be much easier because you already have the press lines there. So I'm going to take a little bit of my wadding down just there because it's not uh, certainly not quarter of an inch. These things always stretch, you'd be surprised how much they stretch. It's only felted fibres, isn't it? So it's going to it's going to stretch a little. Get my lovely wool mat. If any of you ever want a wool mat, take, keep an eye out for the um, the wool mats via my daughter, Avid Cross. I don't think she's got any at the moment. She 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 actually can't keep them in stock because they they just fly out. And um, she does all sorts of different sizes, um, from really, really tiny ones, like five by seven, which I use a lot, um, right up to like, um, and there's my little five by seven, right up to a 12 by 12. And then actually on my bench beside me, I've got a massive one. My bench here, you can just see me tapping there. That's covered in a, in a wool mat. So, there we are, so there is one side pressed and what I can do is just flip that over. So all I'm doing is pushing the seam back against the stitch line, um, folding it back about a quarter of an inch, I'm not being too, too fussed about it. But what it'll do is it'll give me an idea when I turn it through of um, the, where I'm going to top stitch and make a nice neat edge. So if you can see that, you can see that I've just turned it, it's quite easy. So let's turn it through. I'll get my lovely pokey tool. I had uh, one of my lovely ladies, Jackie, bought me a new pokey tool for Christmas. Um, I think it's a chopstick, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. So look, get yourself one of them. Beautiful, isn't it? Um, and really glamorous, I think. So just turn your trolley cover through. And uh, you don't have to be too precious about it and then just pop your tool of choice into your project and just push out those corners. So this is where you do need to be careful because of course if you've cut too near your corners this is where your tool of choice could go straight through the corner. You know it doesn't matter because you can just go back inside and 
and do the stitching again. So there we are, let me just try and get this in the right position for you. So what we need to do now is just to give that a little press, top stitch it, because when you top stitch it, you'll close your turning gap at the top there, and also you'll make a really nice neat finish. It makes a huge difference. But you can see, look, I'm just going to hold it just for a moment. Can you see now how that piece there is actually folded in already? So when I just bring the two together, it gives me the perfect finish. So it's worth just spending a moment just before you turn through by ironing those seams back. So let's bring the machine in. Oh, I need a little press first, don't I? Let me let me get my uh, my iron in again. <laughs> oh, I feel really weird sitting in my new position in my craft room. Nothing feels the same, and yet I've got everything the same around me. It's really weird how just changing your room around can make a huge difference. Now, look, I want your honest opinion. What do you think? Do you think it's better than the last setup I had? Um, yeah, I think it looks tidier. <laughs> The trouble is, it's like anything, isn't it? We surround ourselves with, with stuff, with clutter. Um, all important, excuse me, licking my fingers, all important, all essential to our well-being, but sometimes it starts to get a little bit too much. And it's, it's been lovely. I've had a really good sort out. Have you? Have you had a good sort out at New Year? I sorted out a bedroom, which means that if my granddaughter Lily ever comes to stay with me again her room looks absolutely gorgeous <laughs> I'm not sure it's going to stay like it but it is at the moment so there we are that's lovely I'm just going to check my turning gap again as well because I think yeah that fabric naughty fabric had moved a little bit so let's just tell it who's boss it's because I was chatting and wasn't watching what I was doing and bring the lining in and if you want to, you can pin that um, turning gap closed or get your quilter's tape out and actually stick it. It's only temporary, still need to stitch it. Now somebody asked me the other day what quilter's tape was and I just assume everybody knows about quilter's tape and of course not everybody knows about quilter's tape. But it's such a great thing because it allows you to stick. So I'm just top stitching around, okay? So it allows you to stick things down like zips, maybe, maybe pockets even, turning gaps, um, anything, applique, anything that you want to stay in place. Um, we were making little purses yesterday on a workshop and the purses were made up of strips of fabric, um, really in, um, shabby, chic, vintagey sort of um, purses. And in order for them to stay put and to be able to be machined, we, we used quilter's tape to hold them down. It's paperback, so one side is sticky, one side has the paper on, and once you stick it down um, on, on the sticky side, you just peel the backing off, and it's great. So I've got a little thread there, a naughty thread sticking out. I will snip that off. So you can hear going over the tab. So whiz around that, I'm not so neat now, it's because I'm hurrying. You don't need me to see me stitching around all of this. So it's not it's not as neat as when I started. <laughs> oh dear. Right, here we go. And one of uh, one of my friends, Diana. She was telling me that it, the, if you've got um, a little baby in the seat and they're a bit dribbly and a bit, you know, the teeth are coming through and they need something to chew, far better they chew the trolley cover <laughs> than the trolley handle. Mm, it doesn't bear thinking about, does it? Okay, that's looking gorgeous. Look at that. I love that fabric. Don't you? So now we're going to put the Velcro on. Now the Velcro goes on a certain way and I'm just making sure now it says, da, 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 on the outer piece, place the hook side. Actually, on mine, I put the, the fluffy side. Yep, yeah, I did put the fluffy side, but let's put the hook side on. I'm sure it makes not a jot of difference. And it also says about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to just peel this away from the microphone. There we go. And we're going to put the, it says loop side, so let's do what the pattern says. So do the loop side. <laughs> 
<laughs> on your lining. So I'm following the pictures now. It's all very well writing a pattern. It's you remembering exactly what you did is another matter. And I made this a couple of days ago. That's my excuse. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so on the lining side, which it actually does say that, that's where you put, it actually doesn't matter, just one half of your loop will do. But then what you're going to do is that you're going to flip it over and you're going to put your other half on the opposite side. So I want you to see that. And you see how you've got the tab hanging there. Well, we're going to put the other half on this top edge, but on the right side. OK, I might as well oh, let's bring the clips in. We might as well clip it together now and then I'll just stitch it. So make sure that it's all lined up with the piece um, on the other side. Like I say, it's about a quarter of an inch in. Now, the great thing about this is that I can stitch all the way down one side with the clips still in and then take the clips out as I come back up. So that's handy, <laughs> she says. There we go. It isn't quite level, but it'll do. So there's the right side, okay, and that's how it looks, and this is the wrong side, and that's how it looks. And if you're not sure, just test it out, and what you want, what, what you want to have is when the fabric comes over the handle towards you, you want that to tuck around. You don't want the other side to come up, okay, so you want that to come down, and it'll, it's a nice smooth... Um, sort of coil around your handle so that's how it wants to work so if I look at mine yeah that's okay so all I've done is attach that with with um, quilting clips okay and what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start stitching from up the top there and the reason for that is uh, the simple reason is I can leave those clips in while I stitch down this side, okay? I could stitch down this side if I wanted to and then remove the clips as I go, but I'd like to keep those in place to keep the Velcro from wriggling. Now you can get sticky back Velcro, okay? You can get sticky back. It's not strong enough for this project, okay? It will come off your project. It will still need stitching. And if you stitch, the sticky back Velcro, it'll go all up your needle, okay? It's not, it's not really meant for stitching down. So all we're going to do is a quick back stitch to secure it, and then we're just going to whiz along. And you're actually stitching on the tape, so if I get my finger out of the way, you might see. Um, I could perhaps come in a little bit closer if you can bear the wriggling of the camera, and if I can be anything like a, an engineer. Just one moment. Oh, hold on. Ooh, that'll do. <laughs> That's very near. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so you'll see I'm coming down the outside edge of the tape there. And if you want to, do a zigzag. Because that a zigzag covers a multitude of sins. You won't, nobody will know if you've gone regularly. Uh, especially if you're going to gift these to anybody. It means that you know they're not going to see if you've gone regularly at all because you've used a zigzag so now i've just pivoted and turned now this is where i want you to do a couple of um uh, backwards and forwards backwards and forwards so one two and then three come back on yourself in fact we want to do just one more reverse because i'm not on my velcro there we go and now as i come back i can take my clips out and I'm just going on the tape. I'm not going on the hooks, the loop, the fluffy, the hooky bit. I'm just coming down the tape. And don't worry if it's a little bit, um, you know, if you haven't got it exactly quarter of an inch from the edge. As long as it's fairly straight all the way along, it'll be fine. Be absolutely super. And it's a nice little project for you guys. You know, we need a little bit of uh, easy sewing. So just coming back, I've just pivoted and turned again, and I'm just going one, two, three, and then just cutting my threads off. Okay, so just trim my thread back there. 
So that's the first piece done, okay? So now we're going to just flip it over and we're going to do the second piece and this is on the lining. And uh, to be honest, I think I'd have preferred to put the hoop, the, the, the fluffy on the other side, but I can't think that for a moment it's going to make a jot of difference. I suppose it's um, what we're kind of used to really, isn't it? So I'm just stitching the tape. I'm not stitching on the fluffy or the hooks. I'm not making it difficult for my machine. And like I said, you know, please use, I'm just going to move that because I might as well. Please use a zigzag if um, you feel that your straight stitching is not up, not up to much. And um, certainly I'm not going to tell you off. Just turn it around. One, two, three. And then just come down the other side and just let the machine take it through, okay? There's not a competition on how fast you can go or how straight you can go. I promise you there's not. And there we are. Right down the other side. Now, if you've been stitching along with me, I would imagine you'll have made two by now. <laughs> because I always go nice and slowly. And over the tab. And then one, two, three, and cut the threads. There we go. So there is the <laughs> there is the project completed. Not too bad. And obviously, what we'll do then is um, this this top bit will come round. In fact, let's get my pretend trolley handle in. This top bit goes around. Sorry, guys. And you're just going to hook the other one up. And it, it, because there's so much Velcro here, it just wants to do it. It's just going to grab as easy as pie, okay? So that's, that's your trolley cover made. And like I say, when you're, when, this is how you'll see it when it's on the trolley. And you'll see that it goes around like that. And it's much, much um, a nicer grip on your, your hands than if you had it going the other way. Because you'd have a seam coming up here and you'd feel that seam. So this is really nice and super neat. And then of course what we'll do is the next time we meet up, and let me just get my, my little sanitizer here. When we meet up again, we'll make the little sanitizer carry case to go with it. There we go. Yeah, it's just out of shot now, but that's what we'll make the next time, which is just, uh, like I say, um, a small size bottle of sanitizer, which means you can, of course, refill it. And of course, you can just undo the um, lid here and just sort of press this and the, the sanitizer will come out and of course if you're going around the supermarket you might want to do that two or three times as you're going around. I hope you've enjoyed being with me this evening. Um, I know we've all got a bit of a hot day to eight o'clock tonight haven't we with our, our Prime Minister so we'll wait and see what glad tidings of joy he brings to us this evening. But in the meantime, you could pop up to your sewing area or your dining room or wherever you are, wherever you have your um, uh, little sewing area, and you can just run this up and make some for your friends. Look, the best thing you could ever do is to make this, take your hand sanitizer off and leave it on the trolley. What do you think? I think that would be absolutely incredible. Think about all the fabrics that you've got in your stash. Yeah, that's best not, but think about all the all the yeah, fabrics that you do have. And maybe you could make some of these up and actually leave them on the trolley for the next person. Now, I'd like to think that the next person would be somebody that would appreciate them. <laughs> and not just rip it off and throw it away, that would be awful. You might want to take some spray with you and sanitise it before you do that. Obviously you've got to think of others as well as yourself, but I think that would be a really nice gesture. And one of the things my lovely, lovely, lovely gold ladies did was um, a couple of days ago she made some little um, you remember the little mini shopping bag that we did, um, it's probably about six weeks ago now, one of the free patterns 
and she made them and I, I don't and she she didn't take put the handles on they're all like little little caddies really and she put a packet of seeds in each one I can't remember how many she made about 20 I think and she put a packet of seeds in each one for flowers and she put a little note in there and said these are for you and she left them around her neighborhood in in various places and and she said at the time do you think that's a bit silly and I think she probably had 20 or 30 ladies saying oh my gosh that is the most wonderful thing that you could do and it does make you feel like that doesn't it so why not make some of these give them away to your friends and family it's a nice quick easy make I always take a long time so you can see it thoroughly um, or leave it for the next person just make sure you spray it with some sanitizer before you you do that make it safe for that next person but do take your little sanitizer case off because that's precious precious cargo so there we are so that's making it Monday for this week now the next one will be in two weeks time so whatever that is I can't think of the date off the top of my head and that will probably be a little bit earlier in the evening and there's a particular reason for that but I'll let you know I'll put it on my Facebook page so you can see what time it's going to be um, it's usually we're usually about 45 minutes which we are tonight so I'll time it so it's, it's about 45 minutes because there is a, a specific reason Amanda says they wouldn't be allowed to stay on well you don't know until you try Amanda so see just share the love share the sewing love and see how you get on so that's it that's our trolley stroke cart cover it's a great little project I hope you love making it make it just for yourself if you want to put some bling on it um, I have a little challenge in my group at the moment to find the prettiest button that anybody has in their stash why not stitch it onto this because you could admire it as you're going around the shop and make you feel a little bit better I think okay so that's me done if there's any questions on the uh, in the comments because I can't see um, how many comments there are there I will answer them to the best of my ability I'm sure lots of people have answered those questions already especially if my gold ladies are on there because they jump in as quick as a flash and I thank you for that I thank you so much for joining me this evening it's been an absolute pleasure again and uh, I'll see you again in a fortnight with another fantastic pattern and that of course will be the sanitizer case so I'll see you there <laughs> goodbye everybody bye